Okay, so good morning. Good morning. We are here with uh, Alberto Potosnik, the director of Acer, and uh, today we are going to talk about a very hot topic, uh, which is uh, capacity remuneration mechanisms. So um, we would be grateful for any views you would like to give on that. Particularly, um, are capacity remuneration mechanisms the right instrument to ensure adequacy of uh, electricity grids? And to what extent are they really necessary for the, for the energy market? Well, um, first of all, thank you very much for this opportunity. Um, this is a good question. In fact, it is the question, even though, unfortunately, it has been superseded by event. Um, a large number of member states, jurisdictions, have introduced some sort of capacity remuneration mechanisms over the last few years. So while the issue of whether we need capacity remuneration mechanism is, I think, the issue, and we will be discussing today a lot about this, whether energy-only market can guarantee adequacy also in the future, I think there is also another very important issue, how to make sure that the capacity me remuneration mechanisms which are in place, or which will be put in place in the future, will be such that they do not distort the energy market, the um, uh, in internal energy market in the EU. Uh, they, they are fit for purpose, but without having any unintended or distortive effects. Indeed, this is probably the question. And uh, what we hear sometimes being discussed uh, in these days, in these years actually, because this topic has been very, very much debated, is um, our capacity remuneration mechanism like a sort of patch to make the market work? Um, and are they uh, indispensable because uh, the structure of the market is currently uh, more and more, let's say, includes more and more uh, input from uh, renewable electricity? Is this a way to make the whole system uh, come together and work? Well, that I think is the challenge to make sure that capacity remuneration mechanisms are not attached to a temporary problem, but to see how you can augment the target model that we have uh, with some sort of mechanisms uh, to um, deal with uh, adequacy issues if we come to the view that this is necessary. But as I said, I mean, there is a there is a history and there is a situation at the moment where these capacity remuneration mechanisms are in place. Unfortunately, they've been designed in an uncoordinated way. So um, the other issue is to make sure that um, you have uh, um, consistent capacity remuneration mechanisms. You, we probably also need to look into uh, cross-border participation or, or regional schemes so that we try to preserve the integration of energy-only markets. Oh, that's excellent. So uh, do you think we can talk about uh, um, a long-term vision for uh, uh, harmonized capacity remuneration mechanisms or uh, in the future, in the near future? Well, the Commission has already come out, I think, with two very important um, indications. First is that they want to establish a blueprint for adequacy mechanisms. So um, it would be part of an augmented target model in the future. I think the um, Energy Union communication gave the impression to someone that the energy, uh, the um, electricity target model was going completely to be rethought. I don't think this will be the case. I think it will be uh, a case of making sure that additional components of this target model, which has proved to be for the components that it already has, um, very robust and suitable for and fit for the purpose. So there will, there will be an additional component about adequacy. And then the second indication for the European Commission is that they are looking at beyond um, national borders. So at uh, capacity remuneration mechanism or schemes which are either regional or allowed cross-border participation. So I think these are the two challenges, to find something which is fit for purpose, does not um, distort the um, energy market and somehow as a a, a, a geographical scope which is beyond uh, just the national jurisdictions. Very good. Sounds like very tough challenges. Uh, do you think, um, do you see a link uh, if, uh, between the recent inquiry started by the, uh, the European Commission and the electricity target model uh, more in general? What, what is the link, in fact? Well, I, I, I don't know if there is a link, we should <laughs> ask them. But I mean, if we look at the last inquiry, um, then the results of the last inquiry sparkled the, the third package. Now, I don't think at the moment we need a fourth package, but definitely we need to look at the target model as we have, 
and see which additional components we may need uh, in order to make sure that all concerns and all challenges are actually addressed. Okay, wow, so uh, tough times ahead. Uh, and Challenging uh, times. Challenging times ahead. <laughs> so thank you very much. This uh, was a very interesting uh, debate and uh, uh, we look forward to hearing more in the upcoming workshop. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.